In today's day and age, it is easier than ever to be burned buying online. I'm gonna give you some tips today, things that I've gone through myself, things that I have found are prevalent all over. I wanna help you avoid those pitfalls, keep you safe when you're buying online. Let's go through it today. As always, we're proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you own a tractor, a truck, I don't know, maybe a UTV even, you wanna feel more stable side to side, wheel spacers make a big difference. Bora wheel spacers are made in America, lifetime warranty. Get more information at the link down below. All right, a lot of you guys are turning to the used market right now to find your equipment. Like every other industry, the equipment industry is no different. Long lead times at a lot of different dealers. It's very rare where you can just go right in these days, find something exactly what you want and take it home with you. A lot of equipment has lead times of six months, 12 months, sometimes even longer than that. I've been shopping for a forklift right now. I'm told it could take longer than a year unless I get really lucky. Now, all the equipment you see behind me here is all used equipment that I bought online. I had it shipped into me. I'm pretty comfortable doing that. I do this all the time, but I've had a lot of experience. I know what to look for. I know what to avoid, and I've been burned before, so I know how it feels. I know what I wanna do to avoid it again. So the first big tip for you to help you avoid those scams is to pay attention, make sure the pictures match the description. And so what I mean by that is if it's mentioning a certain model number of the, a tractor or of a UTV, it could have a certain loader on there or a certain mower deck or Certain other identifying details, if you're doing a lot of research on a model, then you're gonna be familiar with the specific part numbers that are coming with that. So if what's shown in the picture does not match what's written in the description down below, that's oftentimes a good clue to let you know there's something potentially fishy going on. And what I found, because again, I see this kind of thing happen, is folks will just take They'll steal the pictures, all right? They'll steal the description from other listings or other places that they find it online. So they'll just copy and paste things, and oftentimes they don't care, right? They don't care if it completely matches up or not. They might tweak things here or there, but these guys aren't typically that smart. So they're not putting all sorts of detail. They're not gonna know all the ins and outs of a zero turn, of a tractor, of a UTV. They're not gonna have an idea if those details really match up or not. So you, as the potential buyer that is getting familiarized with a piece of equipment, needs to bring that kind of information in their head to the table and let you help validate. Does the picture match up with the description? All right, tip number two for you is gonna be all about communication, all right? Now, I'm gonna use Facebook and that's kind of largely what I think of anymore is Facebook Marketplace, but this applies to Craigslist, it applies to any other random site that you might find it on too. But I think it's okay to have that initial conversation via Messenger. However, I think you should still request a phone number if there's not one listed because to me, that's a sign of legitimacy. You know, you can ask specific questions and over the phone, get a feel for how they're conveying that message. If you get a better hunch, a better understanding, if they're telling the truth or not. And oftentimes if they're not going to supply a phone number, that's a pretty big red flag that this is a scam. There's something fishy going on here. For me, that's a uncomfortable, gray area. I don't want to live in. I get that we're living in a, a modern day and age, you know, I don't like to talk on the phone all day long either. However, at some point on a big ticket purchase, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 grand, whatever it is, it really raises that comfort level for me as a buyer. And I'm sure for folks that are calling me, you know, it raises their comfort level as well to talk to somebody on the phone. So if you're talking to somebody and they're not willing to give you their number, for me, that's a no-go. All right, number three for you is gonna be all about pricing. And it should go without saying that if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. I just had this come up recently yet again with a really good friend of mine sent over a listing and said, hey, this thing just posted. It was a John Deere 47. 700 tractor for $6,500, all right? And I said one word back to him. I said scam. In my mind, that's an immediate red flag, all right? Now, I could see that this listing had a bunch of pictures, even though it was just a screenshot. But if somebody took the effort to put up all these pictures, it was a nice high quality looking image that I saw. But in my mind, that's a red flag because there's no way that somebody that's that smart to know that they should put a whole bunch of pictures in a listing is also going to list the price for maybe a third of what this tractor should sell for. So it is not worth getting your hopes up thinking that this is legitimate because number one, if it is legitimate, and you're seeing it 24 minutes after it posted, that's still too late. I mean, back in the day, I used to buy and sell stuff on Craigslist all the time. And I would literally refresh listings on Craigslist like every five minutes to see the latest new listings. There would be times that something had been posted for two minutes and somebody else still beat me to it, all right? So if it's a legitimate good deal, it's gonna be sold within a fir the first few minutes unless the seller has just been unreachable for some reason. But if you see a listing that has been posted and it's an incredibly good deal on paper and it's been out there for a week or two weeks or a month and it's still up, then rest assured that that's a scam or the person sold it long ago and it's no longer available. Tip number four is gonna be check out those pictures. And I don't mean anything like we've talked about so far, but 
what I'm talking about is see if there's a logo somewhere on there that identifies it as being somebody else's picture, all right? And I used to have a lot of my own pictures that would show up in other listings that were available. And folks would either take them right from my website or maybe they would find them because if you search like a John Deere tractor, a certain model, and just scroll through the images, oftentimes you'll see some of my images that pop up too. And so maybe somebody's taking one of those and putting them in their listing. But that's a good thing to look for because if it says Good Works Tractors in the background, for example, I am based in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and you may see a listing pop up in California or in North Carolina. And it's a good idea then if you see something like that that doesn't add up to Google whoever it is in the background, like Good Works Tractors, see where they're located, reach out to them directly to see if it is a product that they're selling. So tip number five is gonna be another thing related to pictures. You know, a picture's worth a thousand words and that's where a lot of these details can be found. And what I've seen over the years looking at all sorts of listings, so I love to find a good deal, is that oftentimes if a listing has one picture, just one picture up there, for some reason that is a really high probability that there's a scam. I'm not saying they're all scams out there, but most folks, if they wanna sell something, they're gonna take the time to put out a bunch of pictures of it, different angles, different views of the piece of equipment that they're selling. They're probably gonna write a pretty good description too. Now you can't get fooled by too wordy of a description. It's gotta tie in, kinda of make sense with the picture, but for some reason, if there's just one picture, that seems to have a higher probability of fraud involved with it than having multiple pictures. All right, now with all that said, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's foolproof, right? So you have to do your homework on it. It never hurts to be anonymous and send a message if you can to somebody to see what kind of response you get. That's not the end of the world. But there are certain things that you might see in a listing that don't necessarily mean there's a problem going on. And so number one could be typos in a listing. And oftentimes, you know, tractor models in particular are notorious for having the weirdest, goofiest model numbers on the planet, or John Deere even, right? There's, <laughs> there's multiple ways to spell that too. Only one is correct, but if you're auto, if you're typing something in your phone, it's gonna auto text or auto populate potentially to something completely different. So overlook the typos if everything else seems legitimate. Now the same thing can be said about pricing. You know, it's easy to put an extra zero on a listing or leave one off by accident. So don't hold somebody to that price or don't think, wow, they're way overpriced. They're completely out of the ballpark. It could easily be a typo. So that's something where it could be worth reaching out to confirm that the price is accurate. And also I found, especially on Facebook for some reason, they have real issues allowing you to always put in an exact price that you want. So sometimes you'll see $1. Sometimes you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Take that with a grain of salt too. That doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get it for a dollar or $123,456 either. It's probably somewhere in the middle. Just reach out to those folks and get the actual price. And the last thing that doesn't necessarily mean it's a scam is gonna be with picture quality, all right? So oftentimes, you know, everybody doesn't have the latest and greatest iPhone or maybe they're just older, right? And they don't have really good <laughs> picture taking skills, right? And so it could be in really poorly lit areas or maybe they're a bit blurry, that kind of thing, and they don't realize it until they're uploading the pictures. And who knows, oftentimes I've asked for better pictures or improved pictures and folks have them right away when they can send them to me. They just didn't have a chance to upload them yet or they're happy to get them for you. So those three tips you could use to your advantage to maybe find something that's been sitting on the market for a little while longer because of a typo or because of an error in a listing of some other kind and work that to your advantage. Because if it's been for sale for a month and they still have it, perhaps they're more open to negotiation. So when all else fails, there's a few other things you can do to have kind of a sanity check, make sure you're not going crazy. The first one would be to reach out to a family member or a friend or even a dealer that sells the same kind of equipment. Send the listing to them, get their feedback on it. Does it seem fishy to them or does it seem legitimate or just get their opinion on it? Because having that second opinion will help you work through any concerns that you have. Also, if you are unfamiliar with how much that model should be selling for, Take a tractor, for example, just Google that model number, like a John Deere 1025R, and find those big listing sites, you know, like a Tractor House or Machinery Repeat, and see what other similar models are going for with a loader and a mower deck, for example. You wanna look for the same type of a setup, of course, if it has a backhoe versus one without a backhoe, that's a huge price difference there. But if the one that you're looking at is like 25, 30, 50% cheaper than the ones that are online, then that should be a pretty big hint that that's gonna be a scam. So the last one is for you guys that are a little bit more probably detail oriented and know your equipment a little bit better. But if you can get them on the phone, ask them very specific questions, you know, like I like to know about third functions, extra remotes, what kind of lights are on there. If there's optional upgrades, you know, like an air ride seat or self-leveling loader or what kind of connection a bucket has, that kind of thing. If you know a lot about a product in particular, then you can have kind of more ammunition in your bag to really 
drill them down and make sure that they know what they're talking about and get a more comfortable feel. If they are able to give you answers that make a lot of sense, then you know that it's gonna be legitimate and you know that they've had the machine for a while and kind of increases my comfort level when I'm buying from an individual. Alrighty guys, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Happy and safe shopping, but guess what? We sell tractor attachments. We sell UTV attachments too. We've got some partners that we work with to sell stuff for your zero turn mowers. So if you get one of these machines, we are happy to help. We sell and ship equipment all over the country. Check out goodworkstractors.com. If you did enjoy today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And we'd love to have you join the conversation too. If you've been scammed, if you know how to avoid a scam, things that we haven't mentioned today, leave those comments right down below and help everybody else out. We'd really appreciate it. So thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.